Hi guys, welcome to another Mindset Moment with Adam. This is me, Adam, here to tell us, talk to us a little bit about today about not giving up. But to me, there are some actors who are just on the scene at the right time. They're, you know, they become famous at the right moments. I think Tim Allen was lucky enough to be one of those actors. Tim Allen was a stand-up comedian who went to college in Michigan and became a hit actor in the 1990s. He wrote, was started many different television shows and still is, as well as movies and stand-up performances and books and who knows what else. Tim Allen became famous. What is Tim Allen known for? Let me remind you. Of course, there's. let's start with Home Improvements. Last Man Standing, the Toy Story franchise, Santa Claus franchise, Christmas with the Cranks, Jungle to Jungle, and of course, Galaxy's Quest. While quite a few of us could probably grunt along with the home with the from to the sitcom Home Improvements, or maybe a few of us can declare to infinity and beyond with our favorite Space Ranger, Galaxy's Quest told us something very different, but probably a little bit more important. Never give up, never surrender. So, Galaxy's Quest, for those of you who don't know, was a 1999 film that was a parody of Star Trek. And it started, up, it started the washed-up cast of this former fictional television show from the 70s, when an alien race called the Them Thermians, who, not understanding that it's fictional, came to Earth thinking that it was a historical documentary and uh, captured this TV show's crew and brought them along onto their real-life spacecraft, thinking that they're, no, they're the actual characters from the show to help them try to stop a villain who destroyed their wants to destroy their race. Plain, simple, parody, weird. So a Tim Allen show. But as silly as this premise is, where it openly mocks Star Trek, Allen continued and continued to repeat the catchphrase, never give up, never surrender. And if you strip the sci-fi and the parody away from all of this, it's not bad advice. Actually, if you put it in the right perspective, if we were to put this sentiment to our lives, never give up, is a great ideal to have, to aim for, to continue to show persistence. But sometimes we do fail. We do give up, but God never will. And that's the amazing thing that I want us to understand today, that God never gives up on us. The one thing I want you to understand today as we talk about this, God never gives up. To understand that, I think we need to talk about the first, the faithfulness of God. God is faithful and patient with us. Amen. God is faithful and patient with us. And those are two things we need to, I sh think we should be thankful for more often because we're pretty stupid as a humans, as individuals. We do foolish things. We do sinful things. We make a lot of mistakes. Sometimes these mistakes even sit with us for life as a lifelong choice, as a consequence of our actions. But in spite of all our sinful shortcomings, in spite of all our mistakes, God still loves you. God is still faithful and has an abundance of grace for each and every one of us. He will always be there for us. Always wanting and waiting to forgive us when we have the attitude of forget repentance, of true sorrowfulness, like the great father that he is. And the psalmist captures this thought perfectly 
in Psalm 86. Um, 86 Psalm 86, 15 reads, But you, O Lord, are a God of a God full of comp compassion and gracious, long suffering, long suffering and abundance in mercy, mercy and truth. Let me read that again. But you, O Lord, are a God full of compassion and gracious, long suffering and abundance in mercy and truth. There's never, ever going to be a limit on the forgiveness of God that He it got. Period. God's never going to grow tired of us. God's never going to be annoyed with our lack of growth. Disappointment like that. No. His love for us is perfect. And God wants to have a relationship with, with us. With us. Wants it. And we should have a relationship with God. We should have a personal relationship with the God of the universe, the God who created us, the God who sent his son Jesus, the Lord and Savior, to die on the cross so that we can be forgiven. And it starts with simply as for us as asking for forgiveness for the sins that we have done, for the wrong things that we've done in our life. Because we are all sinners. The Bible tells us that. And none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. None of us are good enough to get into heaven. We're all sinners. And we need to ask for forgiveness for those sins. And God, Jesus is the only one that can forgive. And then we believe in Jesus, that he is God, God the Son, the part of the triune God who came to earth and lived a perfect life, never once sinning, never once doing anything wrong, but willingly allowed people to kill him so that we can be forgiven. And then rose again from the dead. So that, and is in heaven today, waiting for us to be spend eternity with us. And then choose to follow him. Choose to do what the example he set for us, like the, and follow what the Bible tells us. That's what forgiveness is. Admitting that we made mistakes, choosing, believing in God, and choosing to follow him. That is what it means to have a personal relationship with God. But because of God's great love, his unquestionably great faithfulness, God will never abandon us, never leave us, never grow tired of us, never not want us. And the Bible is filled with examples of this that show God's faithfulness and God's quality of this. In that, um, look at Moses. Look at Moses. When um, Moses kept, when God called Moses to lead the Jewish people out of slavery in Egypt, Moses kept making excuses. God didn't give up. God did not give up on him then. Or Elijah, when the queen made an empty threat towards him, toward him, and Elijah ran away, scared for his life. God didn't give up on Elijah. Or David, when David had an affair with one of the people in his kingdom and then had her husband killed to cover up his mistake, God didn't give up on David. Abraham, when Abraham grew frustrated with not, being, with not having a family and God kept promising him that he'd be the father of the great nation, father of many nations, and nothing, no children, no offspring. God didn't give up. We can keep going, guys. Look at Jacob. God didn't give up on him when Jacob was defined in his youth by being a cheater, a liar, a stealer, a thief. Or Peter, after denying Jesus three different times. Three in one night. Or Saul, when Saul lived for persecuting so many Christians and went town to town doing so, killing and arresting. God didn't give up on these, and we can keep going. God never gave up on them. He'll never give up on us because God is dependable, the dependable constant in our life that we need to understand. And that's not something I can say about myself. 
Because knowing that we have such a dependable God, a God who will never leave us, like Hebrews 13 tells us, ever leave us. We are, are we as faithful and dependable? No. Am I? No. Not even close. The Apostle Paul refers to this humanistic characteristic of unreliableness, of undependableness, kind of like a prize fighter, while the prophet Isaiah describes it more like general weariness. Let me read in 2 Timothy 4.7, Paul writes, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. While Isaiah describes it as, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Man, these are two great sections of scripture that describe kind of like the attitude of human life from these two men's different perspectives, from different periods of time. These two, they capture the human spirit so well, knowing that life is long, life is hard, life is filled with temptations. And as humans, we're not like God. We have a tendency to give up when things are difficult. A, the classic example would have to be like a child's Christmas. We've all been around children. And sometimes us adults are the same way, but I'm just going to say children, who at Christmas get piles of gifts, toys, clothes, stuff, and get greatly excited for them and get lost in that moment of sheer joy. But what happens to that uh, journal four months later? Is that new toy or craft still being used? Did we give up on that too? Is it in a corner, push aside? It, did it even get open? We give up. They get some. It's a habit that sometimes toys like this are given up on, forgot about. But in spite of our tendencies to push God to the background for selfish reasons, for silly reasons, for sinful reasons. God still never, will ever, 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 ever will give up on us. He keeps reaching out to us. Despite the fact that we are all sinners and all needing a Savior, God keeps reaching out to us to save us so that we can have a relationship with Him. God wants us to have a relationship with Him. No matter what we have done, terrible or sinful, we are never too sinful. We are never too evil. We are never too bad, too far gone for God to forgive us. And that's hard for us to understand. We are never too bad for God to forgive us. We just can't give up. Giving up is easy. We can't do it. We cannot give up in life, in general, in our work, in helping people, in falling into temptation, in showing kindness, and especially we cannot give up in our walk with Christ. That growth moments we have with Christ each and every day when we pray with Him, when we spend time in His Word. We cannot. While life is unpredictable, to us at least, and filled with highs, good moments, and far too many low moments. The one thing that will always be the constant, the thing that we can depend on, is God. He will never leave you. He will never give up on us, even though we screw up. He will never stop loving us. We keep pressing forward, running this race of life, no matter how challenging it may be. And we run. Some of us may shuffle, toward, but we keep shuffling and pressing towards the finish, towards the goal of eternity in heaven with God for those who believe in Jesus as their Savior, forever. 
And Paul shares the sentiment in Philippians chapter 3. Uh, verse 12, Paul writes, Not that I have already obtained or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Wise words from Paul. And Paul's message is simple and important. Don't give up. Keep going forward. Not that we're perfect already, because you know what? We're not. I am not. But I'm forgiven. Forgiven and perfect are not the same thing. They're not. But as Christians, as a Christian, people who are forgiven by God, we keep trying. We keep sharing the good news with everybody, with our neighbors, with our friends, with our family, with our co-workers. We keep going forward. We keep growing. We keep expanding the kingdom of God one person at a time. It's not always going to be easy, but it's always worth it. So Tim Allen was right. Never give up. Never surrender. Thanks, guys. God bless. See you soon.